So, today, this is the name of the particular area we're doing. Value, composition and direction of Australia's trade. And the first thing uh, I want to talk about is some key terms. So what is trade? Trade involves either the export, uh, i.e. the selling of goods and services to other countries, or the import, of the buying of goods and services from other countries. You, by trade, you either export or you import. Usually you do both. So that's what we mean when we talk about trade. Okay? When you add these two together, exports plus imports, then you get total trade. And we're going to be talking about that in the next slide. The composition of trade talks about what goods and services are traded. Whereas the direction of trade is where goods and services are traded to and from. I'll give you an example of each of those. Australia exports mostly primary, so, uh, primary resources. So wheat, iron ore, coal. And we import mostly manufactured goods. That's the composition of trade. I've told you what goods and services are exported, which ones are imported. I have told you nothing about the direction. I haven't told you which countries they come from or which countries they go to. Okay? When it comes to the direction, it's mostly with and from Asia. To and from Asia. So most exports, about three quarters go to Asia, about half of our imports come from Asia. We'll get to those in a bit more detail later on, but that's a bit of a overview. Okay, so this is the trend in Australia's trade. Um, what I want you to take into account here is that this is imports plus exports divided by GDP. That's what this graph is telling you. Okay? And the name for that is the, let me just put that one up, the trade intensity. Okay, so exports plus imports divided by GDP is your trade intensity. So what percentage of total output do we trade? And you can see here the historical um, trade intensity. There's one big event that happened around here. I've talked about this before. Does anyone remember what it was? It's not the Second World War. Second the Second World, World War ended in 1945. Not the second wave of globalization, it was another war. Korean. The Korean War. This is the Korean War boom. There was a war in Korea. Korea is a very hot place, an unexpected war, big demand for clothing, for uniforms, for soldiers. Okay, so what happened was the price of commodities went up, and particularly things like wool and cotton. Australia was the biggest producer of wool in the world. Price of wool went through the roof. Uh, big increase in Australian exports of wool during this period. We can see it shot up for about, what's that, 25% up to almost 50%. But then came down and continued to fall until the late 60s, early 70s. And you can see that up until the early 70s, the general trend was down. Australia's trade intensity had been falling. It was only in the early 70s that the trade intensity started to increase. What happened starting from the early 1970s? It was the first reduction in trade barriers. In the 1970s, uh, inflation was quite high. Uh, the then government decided we're going to have a 25% across the board tariff cut. And then in the 80s and 90s, that was intensified and continued, with six, uh, successive governments continuing to, try, uh, to cut barriers to trade. And you can see the trade intensity continuing to increase over this time. The GFC saw a slight fall, but that was, is it structural or cyclical? It's cyclical. It went down and then it continued going up. Okay, this is not a, 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 a permanent thing, it's a temporary drop. So it went up, 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 temporarily down, continued to increase. This goes up to 2005, 6, so sorry, this was not the GFC. Just, just, just uh, This was uh, just before. So it would have fallen a little bit, but it's continued to increase. Okay. So the point I want to make here is that since the 1970s, Australia's trade intensity has continued to grow. Again, this tells you nothing about the composition or the direction of trade. This is about the volume of trade the quantum of trade, how much, as a proportion of GDP. Okay? Alright, could you please write this down? So, trends in Australia's trade. Australia's yeah. so protectionist policies of high tariffs, but trade intensity, exports mm -hmm. plus imports as a percent of GDP, was only 25% in the 1960s. Oh. Uh, so this tells you where we were, why it changed, and then what that has led to. So, trade intensity reached 45% prior to the GFC. Uh, Daniel, could I get you to read this for us? Australia's focus on primary industries where it has a comparative advantage. Uh, primary industries include agricultural, wheat, green, beef, and beef, uh, and mining, coal, and iron, and gold. Okay, one more dot point. Australia is less competitive in manufacturing groups and tends to import them in large volumes. Okay, Josh, could I get you to read the last two dot points? 
Agricultural exports have declined due to protection used by other countries, price fluctuations, and frequent droughts. Meanwhile, mineral and service exports have risen due to higher commodity prices and fuel barriers due to natural travel. Some economists argue Australia relies too much on primary industry exports. Okay, this is a bit of an idea of what we're going to be looking at in the next couple of slides. So, what does Australia sell? What doesn't it sell? What does it import? Does it rely too much on primary resources, on primary industries? So the first thing we're going to look at is the historical composition of exports. Can someone tell me historically what was Australia's biggest export? Wool. Wool. Very good. Can you see up here? It is a huge amount, a huge proportion of Australia's exports early on. There was the old saying that Australia uh, was carried off the wool's back, yeah. off the sheep's back, rather, uh, and that was because of wool. Australia's primary export in its early years was wool. Okay, so not just wool, but what else? What are these things down here? Meat, cereals. dairy, cereals, cereals, other food. What sort of industry is that? Wheat. Agriculture. Agriculture, very good. So, all of this is agriculture. Agriculture was anywhere from 60 to 80% of Australia's exports. 60 to 80%. It is a huge amount. This is before you get onto mining. Mining was... In the early years, not quite that much. You know, you had some, uh, where is it, iron ore. Yeah, this, one, this one's iron ore, and uh, this one is gold, which fluctuated. Sometimes you get more than other times, depends on the gold price. You have petroleum and nat uh, natural gas, uh, coal, um, ores and scrap, a few other things. And up here is, is other. Interestingly here, machinery, transport equipment, other manufacturers. Manufacturing recently has grown a little bit, but it's never quite been that big. So early on, what did you have? Huge agricultural exports, some mineral exports, and then other. Okay, I think something like 85% of Australia's exports were primary industries. Huge reliance on primary industries. What has happened in the second half of the 20th century? What do you see to agriculture here? It fell from about 80%, down, down, down to about 20%. Okay, so a big drop off in agriculture. Australia is no longer as reliant on agriculture as it used to be. What is it reliant on instead? All of these things, metal ores, coal, iron ore, petroleum and gas, gold, yeah. and mining. Coal and coke. Coking coal and, um, and regular, coal, uh, regular coal. So coking coal is used to make steel, and regular coal, black and brown coal, is used for uh, powering coal power plants, coal power plants. Uh, so about 50% of Australia's exports today are mining, about 20% of agriculture, and then you have manufacturing and services with the rest. Historically, that means Australia's exports have been, hey remember it, rocks and crops. Used to be crops, now it's rocks. Okay. That has been the historical change. In particular, iron ore and coal. Look at this, this is the last 10 years. Yeah, the last 10 years, this is the quantity of iron ore and coal exported. The quantity of iron ore in the last 10 years has gone from uh, about 40, 40 million tons to 150 oh, tons. Million, of uh, megatons. A uh, megaton is a million tons, isn't it? Anyway, it's gone from whatever the, the 40 is to 150, three or four times as much as it used to be 10 years ago. What about coal? It's gone from about 50 to 90, so it's almost doubled in 10 years. These are huge increases in these exports over the last decade. This has been what has driven much of the mining boom. It's been an export-led boom in iron ore and coal in particular, especially iron ore. Huge increase in exports of iron ore. Okay. What I'd like you to do is copy these two things down. For much of the 20th century, agriculture, primarily wool, but also meat, dairy, and cereals, accounted for 60 to 80% of Australia's exports. Okay, 60 to 80% of Australia's exports was agriculture. That was most of the 20th century, up until the 50s and maybe the 60s. Since the 1950s, mining, in, particularly, in particular, iron ore and coal, has grown from what used to be about 10% of exports to about 50% today. Okay, that has been the shift. Manufacturing has stayed mostly steady during that time, as very little. What you've seen is a shift from one type of primary industry to another type of primary industry, from agriculture to mining. And you can see the figures there, from 60 to 80% down to 20, and from 10 up to 50. 
The current composition of exports. Okay, what I want you guys to notice from this is this is split out into individual uh, goods and services, so it's mostly goods. Remember, about 50 to 60 percent is mining. Okay, 50 to 60 percent is mining. Look at coal and iron ore and look how much bigger they are than Someone any of the next ones. There is daylight between these two and the rest of Australia's exports. Okay, iron ore and coal. Let's go down the list and count how many of them are from the mining industry. Iron ore, coal, coal, natural gas, crude petroleum, aluminium, copper, that's seven. One of them is agriculture, that's eight primary resources. Eight primary industry commodities. Nine, sir. How many? Nine? Did I miss one? Education. Education is not primary industries. It's services. Okay? Um, personal travel, excluding, excluding education services, means tourism. And education related services, primarily international students coming to Australia for an education. Um, they are the two services. Notice there are no manufacturing exports listed here. That's partly because they're split out amongst a lot of different types of goods, but there's not many uh, manufactured exports in Australia. The main thing to take from this is the dominance of mining, and within that, the dominance of iron ore and coal. And those exports that we do have that aren't primary industries tend to be <coughs> services like education and tourism. But even they, they are nothing compared to iron ore and coal. So, these are the, the figures. Most exports from Australia are primary products, 62%. So mining is about 50%, agriculture is a little bit more. On top of that, which gets you to 62 The most significant are iron ore and coal, 19 and 13%. I haven't given you the numbers for the others because I don't think they're quite as important. Natural gas, oil, wheat, aluminium, copper. These are also important. Other exports include services, such as education and tourism. Sir, can we copy? Let's copy down. Uh, yes, yeah, so there's a little hand on the, the pen. Make sure you copy it down. Manufactures is 13% and other is 8%. So gold is not included here in primary industries because it's not used to build anything. It's not used to make steel, it's not used to power, coal power, coal fire, power plants. It's, it's, a, it's a strange commodity in itself. So gold is included in other. So it is quite a large um, item that's exported. Notice manufacturing, 13%. Australia exports as much coal as it does its entire manufacturing industry. They're each 13%. And about 50% more iron ore than all its manufacturing exports. We've looked at exports, we're now going to look at imports. Um, the lines are all dashed and dotted differently, so you can tell them apart, even with the different colours. So, pri primary products, services and manufacturing. What I want you to appreciate from this is, yeah, there's been some ups and downs, but for the most part, these have not changed significantly over time. Compare it to the previous graph. Um, up here, you've got manufacturers. They've been 60 to 65% for most of the last half a century. What about for services and primary products? There you go up and down and up and down, but it's always up and down. It's not one direction solely. You could argue that primary products have gone down slightly from 20-something percent to the low teens. But that's not a huge difference. Okay? So historically, imports, their composition has not changed much. Okay? So that's the easiest one. The composition of imports to Australia has not changed significantly over recent decades. Since write this down. And the key bit to remember is Australia has been a big importer of manufacturers, which accounts for 60% of its total imports. We export very few manufacturers, Australia imports a lot. Alright, the current composition of imports. Um, this looks at the specific items that are imported, and you can see it's... Uh, you don't see a lot of manufactured goods here because they're spread out over a very large number of individual types of manufactured goods. Whereas things like tourism, um, crude and refined petroleum, which are primary and tertiary products, so that is uh, resources and services. They are our principal imports by individual item, but there's a lot of manufactured goods in here. So goods vehicles, uh, passenger motor vehicles, you've got uh, telecom equipment, you've got uh, medicaments, which are medication, uh, you've got computers, you also have things like televisions, mobile phones, those sorts of things. Okay? So they don't show up very much here, but Australia imports predominantly 
manufactured goods. And then you can see the actual goods that Australia tends to import. So what is the current composition of imports? Manufacturers, 57%. That is the current rate of import for manufacturers. 57% of all imports to Australia are manufactured goods. Make sure you write this down. The most significant? Motor vehicles, telecommunications equipment, medication, and computers. I've lumped all motor vehicles together. So this is passenger um, and commercial vehicles. It's 8%. Big number. Uh, other imports. Services, 20%. Primary products, 20%. Other, 3 You know, negligible. So services and primary products split the difference. What are the primary services that we import? Tourism and transport. And what are the main primary products? Crude and refined petroleum. In the 1950s, the UK and Europe were Australia's major trading partners. Uh, US, uh, sorry, the UK and Europe. Predominantly the, uh, the UK. They all colonial masters, as they still were. Now it's Japan, Northeast Asia, and the ASEAN countries. You guys know what the ASEAN countries are? Nope. Yeah. ASEAN countries are Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore. Um, they are more important trading partners for Australia. Why is that? Well, when the European Union formed, it imposed trade restrictions on Australia, making it more difficult for Australia to export to Europe. The UK was forced to stop trading with its former colonies and started focusing its trade on Europe. That's the point where Australia stopped focusing on UK and Europe, started focusing on Asia. And that has only intensified ever since. So, the 1960s saw the rapid growth in the Japanese economy, later on also in other Asian economies, which called the Asian Tiger. So, those Asian countries experienced high rates of economic growth, making them favorable trading partners for Australia. So on one hand, you had the push factors of less trade from, from and with Europe, and more trade with Asia, the pull factor of more trade with Asia. China has now replaced Japan as Australia's largest export market. This is only a recent event. Up until recently, Japan was Australia's largest export market. And the Asia Pacific region is now more important to Australia's economy than the EU, Europe, and the USA. Significantly more, as we're going to see. So, let's have a look at the direction of export. This only goes back for the last 15 years or so. Okay, it doesn't go back 50 years. Um, if you did go back 50 years, you would see that a lot of Australia's exports went to the UK and the EU. What can we see here? What do we see here? Japan has for a long time been a major trading partner of Australia in terms of exports. A lot of exports go to Japan. About 20%. Just under 20%. The European Union, or Europe, used to get slightly less than Japan, so the whole of Europe, and it's been on the decline as a proportion of total exports. So the total amount of exports has probably maintained or grown slowly, but not as fast as other exports, and that's why the proportion has declined. The same with the US. The US was the next major export market. It has also been on the decline. South Korea has remained steady as has, as has Japan. It was slightly less, but a much smaller economy than the rest. Why did we export so much to it? It was in Asia. It was closer to Australia. It's easier to do so. Um, but it was a smaller economy, so we didn't export as much to say, the US or to Japan. And these other two, this is where the growth has been. India to a lesser extent, but predominantly Japan. Look at the last 15 years, the meteoric rise of exports to Japan. Look what it's gone from, about 5% of exports 15 years ago, it's now about a quarter of Australia's exports uh, to China. Sorry, not Japan. Japan stayed about steady, about 15-20%. Exports to China have grown dramatically over that period of time. Okay? Can you see that impact? And it's only recently. In the last couple of years, China overtook Japan. So up until a few years ago, Japan was still Australia's largest export market, and it is still Australia's second largest export market. By a wide lot, by a wide shot, look at this difference. It's China, big difference, Japan, big difference, lots come together. Uh, we will get into what we export. Actually, that's what we did earlier. What we're going to focus on is just the direction. So copy this out. Japan has traditionally been Australia's major export market over the last couple of decades. It was overtaken by China in 2009, and this has been accompanied by a rising proportion of exports going towards Asia. Um, we can see the current direction of trade. Again, like the composition of exports, 
the direction of exports is China 1, Japan 2, and then sunlight before you get to, or daylight before you get to the next economy. China, then Japan, and I want you to know that the remaining countries, Asia, Asia, Asia. United States, not Asia. It goes to show you how much, how much of Australia's exports go to Asia. It's 75% of Australia's exports today go towards Asia. That's a recent phenomenon. It's only in recent decades that has happened. And where do they go predominantly? Number one, China. Number two, Japan. So, where do exports go? Asia, 75%. You need to write this down. 75% of Australia's exports go to China. The most significant, uh, to Asia, sorry. China is 28%. One country. Over a quarter, almost a third of Australia's exports. Next, Japan, 16%. That's a sixth. So we have almost a third, almost a sixth. These two together account for just under half of Australia's exports. Just under half. Two countries. Second and third largest economies in the world. Cool. Um, also, India and New Zealand, huge difference here. 4% and 4% compared to 16 and 28. What are the other major export markets? Include all of Europe together. If you lump them all in, you get 9%. And the USA, you get 5%. Is it Next slide. Historical direction of imports. So this one goes back to the 1970s. This one, I think, is quite good because it shows you the moment, this shows you the moment that the United Kingdom joined the EU. This, this is the European Union, so it's not Europe, but it includes the United Kingdom, okay? Keep in mind, when you hear Europe, that means the entire continent. When you hear the European Union, that means all countries in the European Union, which is most of Europe. And when you hear number three, the Eurozone, that's all countries that use the Euro as their currency. So it includes the UK and a couple of other yeah. small economies. Um, but the EU excludes Russia, and the Eurozone excludes the UK. Europe includes everyone. So, you can see here, in the 70s, the UK joined the European Union. They stopped trading with Australia and other former Commonwealth colonies. Imports from the European Union began to fall. Okay, less trade with the UK. This was also the time when imports from Japan started to, to rise. Okay, so they started importing more from Japan. What happened over time? All of these other Asian economies. First, Hong Kong, Korea, and Taiwan. Imports from them started to rise. ASEAN countries as well. Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam. Imports from them started to rise. And only in the last 20 to 30 years did imports from China start to rise. And even then, they're not all that high. Most imports are still from the European Union. So although Australia exports a lot to Asia, a lot of Australia's imports still come from the European Union and from the USA. But those are on, at least the US is on the decline, the European Union has, has fallen quite a bit, and Asia is on the rise. But the rise of imports is not as dramatic as the rise in exports. So these are the figures. You should write this down. In the 1970s, a majority of imports to Australia came from Europe and the USA, about 60%. So 60% of imports used to come from Europe, and the USA. 